الجامعة الافتراضية السورية كتاب القانون الدولي للدكتور عماد الدين محمد تقدمت مبادرة الضوء بصوت رغد حمام Module 5 International Human Rights Law Learning Objectives By the end of this chapter, you should be able to Know the definition of human rights Explain what constitutes human rights What is the difference between first, second, and third generation human rights? What are human rights? When was the concept of human rights first recognized and why? What factors determined the need of human rights? Know the difference between the two conventions Convenant on Civil and Political Rights 1966 and Convenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights 1966. Why human rights are not universal? Understand the contradictions of human rights. Be able to challenge the notion all human rights are universal, indivisible, and interdependent and interrelated. Page 1, Para 5, Vienna Declaration and the Program of Action 1993. Human rights are those fundamental and non-transferable rights which are the essential ingredients of life for a human being. However, there is no absolute agreement as to what these rights should be, which means that what a human rights may be interpreted as being differs according to the particular economic, social, and cultural society in which they are being defined. However, under contemporary international law, human rights have been increasingly subdivided into three classifications, first, second, and third generation rights. Civil and political rights constitute the first generation rights. Economic, social, and cultural rights, the second generation. Whilst the group rights are characterized as third generation rights. The distinguishing feature of the latter is that the focus is on collective human rights as opposed to individual human rights. The right to development and the right to self-determination are two of the principal examples of third generation rights. Many states regard the human rights as an issue which falls only within the scope of domestic jurisdiction and not as an issue which should be addressed by international law. However, the international law position is that severe violations of human rights can no longer only be the exclusive jurisdiction of individual states. Human rights are a subject of contemporary international law and the efforts to regulate the human rights at an international level only gain momentum after World War II. Rights of individual recognized by international law pre-1945 Minority groups which comprise of those people of a different race, religion, or language from the majority group within a state are guaranteed certain rights, such as equality of treatment, freedom from slavery, and these guaranteed certain rights have been recognized under customary international law since 1815 and was later reaffirmed in international conventions. The trafficking of women and the children was similarly prohibited by conventions, but with the exception of such isolated ad hoc intervention, there was no attempt to regulate the human rights at an international level until after 1945. Prior to World War II, minority groups and foreign nationals were in privileged position vis-à-vis -vis majority groups and nationals of the host state. 
they were recognized as deserving at least a minimum standard of a treatment. Rights of the individual recognized by international law post-1945 The signing of the United Nations Charter marked the formal realization that human rights are a matter for international concern. One of the purposes for which the United Nations was founded was to achieve international cooperation. In promoting and encouraging respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language, or religion. Article 55 and 56 charge the United Nations and member states with achieving inter alia universal respect for and observance of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language, and religion. However, the language and the text of the Charter is rather vague, and although members have pledged themselves to the realization of human rights, they were not required to do so within a particular time period. The United Nations Charter, while acknowledging certain benefits for which individuals should enjoy, it does not actually confer rights upon them. United Nations The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was one of the first resolutions which were adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on December 10, 1948. This declaration spells out a series of political, civil, economic, social, and cultural rights. However, the resolution is not legally binding. The declaration has been tacitly accepted by all member states and has served as an outline for the constitution of many newly independent states. It has been a debatable issue that, if not all, the rights and the freedoms which were proclaimed in the Charter have now become accepted as customary international law. The rights which are split out in the Universal Declaration are diverse and include inter alia, the right to life, liberty, and security of the person, freedom from slavery or servitude, freedom from torture, or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, recognition as a person before the law, the right to nationality, the right to own property, freedom of thought, conscience and religion, the right to participate in government, the right to social security, the right to work and the right to education. The right and the freedoms are to be enjoyed without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status. In June 1993, a conference was organized in Vienna with the aim of expanding the protection and the promotion of human rights within the international community. This conference provided an opportunity for an extensive analysis of the international human rights system and the mechanism used to provide such protections. The Vienna Conference considered human rights education, training and public information essential for the promotion and achievement of stable and harmonious relations among communities. And in December 1994, the General Assembly pronounced 1994-2004 as the United Nations Decade for Human Rights Education. The rights and the freedoms set out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights have been articulated more precisely in two separate international convenants. 
These are the Convenant on Civil and Political Rights, 1966, which entered into force in March 1976, and the Convenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, 1966, which entered into force in January 1976. A General Assembly resolution was adopted in 1985 regarding the human rights of individuals who are not nationals of the country in which they reside. An initial difference between the two covenants is that the obligation assumed by a state under the covenant on civil and political rights are required to be implemented immediately upon ratification of the covenant by a state, while the covenant of economic, social, and cultural rights provides the realization of the rights it recognizes may be achieved progressively over a longer term. The fulfillment of economic Social and cultural rights depends upon a state's economic development, where is the right to recognition as a person before the law can be put into effect upon implementation of the appropriate legal measures. Other United Nations Conventions Guaranteeing Particular Human Rights a number of international conventions which have guaranteed specific human rights have been concluded under the influence of the United Nations. Such conventions include the 1948 Genocide Convention, the 1966 Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, 1973 Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid, the 1979 Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, 1984 Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment, the 1989 Convention on the Rights of a Child, and the 1990 Convention on Migrants Workers. All these conventions are now in force. The end of the module, the end of the record.